Hello world, welcome to a front-end sesh, where we'll build this Discord status container. To start with the rough outline of what we'll need, I can make a section for the container, make a div to hold all of this user info, and another to contain all the buttons. We'll also create this transition on hover and these pop-ups. Let's start with marking things up. As planned, I'll make a section for the container and give it a class of panel, then create two more divs, one to hold the user info, the other to contain the buttons. For these buttons which can switch between states, I'll give a class of switcher. Well, the settings one is an oddball considering it doesn't switch between states unlike others, but I'll let that one be. Inside user info, we'll have a div to hold the avatar and the status indicator, so I'll make one and give it a class of avatar wrapper, and put the image inside it. I can't stand it being this big so I'll jump to CSS and sell it so it is the right size. I want the avatar to be 32 pixels wide and corners to be circular. I'll need a class for the image so I can inherit the width and border radius from its wrapper. I'll need a holder for the status indicator and a div for status itself. Let's go ahead and put the stolen SVGs in the buttons now. We'll need a div to contain the username, another div to contain the status emoji along with the tag that needs to roll up on hover. I'm using some resets to have this at the center so it's easier for demonstration. And for the same reason, I'll come to the main sheet and style a panel so it's a little bigger in size after I give it some background and padding. I'll make this a flex container and give an absolute width to achieve a look that's similar to Discord. I'll give a justify content of space between so the two flex children are pushed to the sides, leaving the space between them. I want the items to be vertically centered which can be achieved by giving an align items of center to the flex parent. I'll make the user info to be a flex container too and align the contents so they are vertically centered. Coming to styling the username, I'll decrease its font size. We'll also need to do that for the tag and the emoji, so I'll go back to the markup and add the relevant classes, come back to CSS. Instead of selecting the descendants themselves, I'll give a font size to the parent which will tread down to its children. Let's give some margin to the avatar wrapper so there's some space to its right. Next, I want to hide the tag. I'll position it relative to the roller, so we'll get that position prop to the roller. Also, the tag will be overflowing in a bit, so I'll hide the overflow on this container. Now for the tag itself, I'll give the position of absolute. I think since I had not given an explicit height to the wrapper, it was stretching because it was a flex item, but given that I did give an align items of center, it should not have. Sorry I don't know the exact reason here, do let me and everyone else know in the comments if you know why. Time for the status icon. It'll be a 10 pixel square background of fantastic green and a perfect circle. To achieve the empty space around the circle, I'll give its parent a padding and a background of the same color as the panel. Now I'll need to position this holder relative to the wrapper, so I'll supply a position of relative. I'll need this to be a circle too, so the border radius of 50%. The parent relative to whom the absolute element should be positioned. It needs to have a position prop, so I'll give a position relative to the wrapper. Come down to the holder and play with the positioning. The space is too much, so I'll decrease the padding and also the total size of the icon so it resembles that of Discord. Ignore the bottom and right props on the icon, I forgot to delete them after I realized that I had to position the holder itself and not just the icon. Let's jump to styling the buttons. First, I'll make the container a flex box, then select the switchers and remove the borders. I'll make these flex boxes too, so the icons are perfectly centered. We'll make these uh, have an equal width and height and give a border radius and make the background transparent. And the color of these should be this gray. On hover, these need to get a lighter gray background so I'll select the hover pseudo class and set the background to the expected color. Also I want the cursor to change to pointer and do not want the outline. I don't know why but I was facing an intermittent issue with the cursor not becoming a pointer so excuse me for that. Now for the next part we'll be working with the hover effects and the tool tips. So first, I'll go to the markup and add the tips as data attributes to every element that will have a tool tip. Then with the pseudo element, I can access the attribute values with the content attribute like this. Now we'll need a tip for the username too, which will say click to copy username. But if you remember, they all look the same, the tool tips. So instead of separately styling them, I'll give a common class to all the elements that need a tool tip. Then come to CSS and start styling tipper boys. I want it to be at the top of the respective element, so I'll give it a position of absolute and a top of zero. Decrease the font size, make the font weight to be normal, give the text 
a color of white and a background of black. Give some breathing space with the padding. I also want them to be centered horizontally, so we'll do the left 50% translate negative 50% trick. But before that, I'll need position relative to the parent, so that's that. A little bit of border radius would make it look better, also the way it's supposed to. For the pointy thing, I'll use the after pseudo element, no content, but we'll make it a square by supplying equal height and width. I'll give it an arbitrary background color so that I can see what's happening. Now I'll need this to be positioned absolutely too. I make it a pointy thing at the bottom by rotating the square by 45 degrees. We'll need to fiddle with the top and translate values to position them just where I want after I push them back with the Z index of minus 1. And finally, I'll make the BG black. We'll now make these so that they appear on hover. I can't give the tipper boys an opacity of 0 because they are on the elements that we want to be able to see. The pseudo elements need to be given an opacity of 0 and on hover, their opacity needs to be 1. I want the cursor to be a pointer on hover, so I'll add the cursor prop to the username class. Okay, I want the transitions to be smooth, so we'll come to the pseudo element styles and provide a transition prop to control the changes to opacity. There's another subtle animation in place, which is that the tipper boys slightly become bigger after appearing, which makes up a nice subtle bounce effect. So I'll employ the same trick of having them scale down to 98% initially and 100% on hover. I'll need to copy the complete transform prop from their initial state or they would frantically move around. The effect is not evident right now because I'll need the transition on transform with the custom cubic bezier to achieve the subtle bounce. Coming to displaying the tag, I want it to appear on hover of the panel. So I'll define a panel hover rule saying that when that's hovered, we could move the roller depth that holds the tag and username up. So we'll play around with the transform values only to realize that that wouldn't work. But what we want instead is that the emoji and the tag need to individually move up and down so the roller stays in the same place and we see the emoji disappearing above when the tag comes up and vice versa. The whole point of having an overflow of hidden on the roller. And oops, that's supposed to be status emoji and not username. There's no smoothness to this, so I'll give them both a transition prop saying their transform needs to happen over a course of 320 milliseconds. And I think that does it for styling the status panel component of the UI. Let's sync this up with the UI that was previously developed. I'll remove the reset that is holding this at the center of the screen, then fix the panel to the bottom of the page by giving it a position of fixed and a bottom of zero. Let's put our guild bar on the page. Now, we need to move the panel a little bit to the right by giving a left prop to it. If I remember correctly, the padding on left and right is 0.5 rems, plus the 4 rems of the squircle. We'll need a value of 5 rems to put it exactly where we need it. Now, the hover is getting activated even on the pseudo element. To prevent it, we'll set their pointer events to none. One more thing I needed to make was to have this section to be a part of the nav, because if I didn't, I would have problems like popper boys going behind the panel or the panel being covered by the nav. With that sorted, I'm done with the content of this episode. Thanks for watching.